Pag yung dalawang araw, kasi yun si Rico nag-twitch din ako. Kahapon po. Hindi ako pinag-tulugin. Lord, ganun pala yun. Pag mag-twitch ka, hindi ka papatulugin eh. Ang dami pumupunta sa utak mo. Ano pala? Sulat ng sulat. Ang pagtapagal na nga po ng sulat. Pero ganun pala yung pag, ano, nagkakaroon ko yung revelation from God. Non-stop siya. Nang napaglagamitin ka. Hindi ka ano. So, ang topic natin today is answering God's calling. Amen po ba? Okay po. So, sabi po dito sa Psalms, Right, 150. He will call on me and I will pray. Uh, I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. So everyone has a calling. Po. Lahat po tayo may calling. And if you, you have to understand the fact that a calling is, it can be something big. It can be something small. Amen? It, it, you know, it can be as small as asking, you know, God asking you to pray for someone. It can be as big as God is asking you to preach His word. You know, it can be small or big. But at the end of the day, it's still a calling. Amen? It's still a calling from God. So everyone has a calling. It can be leadership. It can be pastoral. It can be in a ministry. It can be the music team. It can be the usher. Everyone has a calling. Every day you are being called by God. Amen? No, ako po, no. First time ko po narinig yung tawag po sa akin ni Lord, 10 years ago. You know, um, nasa JMG po ako na, nasa youth ministry, we were in the Easter camp. Dito tawag natin yung GR. Sa amin, Easter camp. <laughs> so, I was praying back then, we were all together. I was praying back then. Tapos, um, God used this pastor, his name is Pastor Rick, yung senior pastor ng church na yun. And while he was praying, while, while he was praying, we were praying, everyone was praying, everyone was crying, and all of a sudden, he came close to me. Niyakap niya ako. And the moment kung niyakap niya ako, it didn't feel like he's the one hugging me. It felt like God was hugging me. Okay? It felt like I was hearing God's voice. It felt like hearing God's voice. It didn't seem like it was Pastor Rick talking to me. It seemed like God was talking to me. And what God said, he said, my son, you're going to be the lighthouse. You're going to be the lighthouse that will shine light from the, for those that are in the dark to bring them back to light. That was my first calling. Second calling po uh, as, as time passed, as time passed, uh, everyone kept reminding me of my calling, Pastor Adita. Uh, kept reminding me of my calling. Sila, Pastor Akora, they prophesied din po sa akin. Si Pastor Henry uh, from Africa, na, na prophesied din po. So most of the pastors na naging guests natin dito, pinaprophesy ako. But then, at the end of the day, as humans, the usual thing that we do, we have excuses. Right? We have excuses why we can't do this. We have excuses why we can't do that. Amen? So everyone has a calling. Sabi po, tingnan po natin, First Peter 2, 9, verse 2, ch no, ch First Peter 2, 9, but you are chosen, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim his excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into light. Amen? Okay, but, so, Lahat po tayo may calling. Sabi nga po sa, sa, ano, sa Psalms, chosen eh. Diba? Sabi po sa Bible, you did not choose God, but God chose you. Sabi po sa Jeremiah, sabi sa Jeremiah, before you were born, He knew you already. Diba po? Before you came up your water's womb, He prophesied you already. Alam niyo na po, kung anong magiging, kung anong, what, what, he, before you were born, He has a plan for you already. What you'll be, what you'll do, what you'll become. So everyone has a calling. Pero po, because of those callings, there are excuses. So we have small excuses. Pag sinabi ni Lord, Hey, um, Larissa, kailangan gawin mo to. Pero the usual thing that we say is, Ay, Lord, mamaya na lang to. Lord, next time na lang, busy ako ngayon. Or, Lord, pwede ba po? Sa tingin ko, hindi ako rightful enough para gawin yan. Pwede, iba na lang. We have 
of excuses. Amen? And because of these excuses, we hinder ourselves from being used by God. Amen? Mag-aimo naman kayo para wala akong kausap. Ito pa lang mag-isa. Ha? So, kasi, bakit ko ay tahimik ko sa hindi. So, you know, accepting God's call is an extension It's an extension of your commitment. It's an extension of your covenant. Di ba po? Para pong computer yun eh. You know, accepting Christ in your life is not enough. It's the start, but it's not enough. You have to walk with Him. Di ba po? Accepting Christ is saying yes. Pero you have to walk with Him in order to fulfill everything that God wants you to be, that God wants to give you. Amen. So, para siya computer, alam niyo yung mga computer po, di ba? Yung siya pag bilhin natin today, magiging outdated. Di ba? Ang computer dapat laging ina-update. It's the same relationship with God. Your relationship with God should always be upgraded. Lapat laging mamature. Ang gusto kasi natin, pag nakaka-accept na tayo, pag pupo tayo ng church, gusto natin nakaupo lang tayo eh. Diba? Gusto natin nakikinig lang tayo. We make excuses why we, we can't You know, we make it gusto natin, pasyonasyon na tayo. Diba? We don't want to work. We want, we don't want to actually go for it. We don't want to actually be used. Kasi bakit? Excuses. We have excuses. And the sad thing about it is we have excuses. Diba? The sad thing about it, looking at it from now, is that you know, those excuses and what hinders. Everyone here was born for something better. God made you to become something more. Amen. God made you and has a plan for you, something better than what you're thinking of. But because of these excuses, because of these excuses that we have right now, is what hinders you from actually being used by God. Just imagine, just imagine, right? You know, God has a bigger plan. And because of these excuses is why we can't step forward. Right? God's asking you to move, but because you have excuses, is why you can't step forward. Amen? So, when I got called by God, when I heard my calling, I was like, when, when I heard my calling, I had my excuses as well. You know, my excuse to was, I'm not ready. I'm not right yet. Why? Because of the things that I've done before. Right? Because of the things that I've, you know, that I've been doing. I kept hearing, you know, the pastors telling me, hey, you know, you're going to become a pastor one day. You're going to become the replacement of your dad one day. But then I always ignored them. Why? Because I didn't think that I was right enough. I didn't think that I was right enough. I didn't think I was ready. Right? But then, you know, when God calls you, no matter what, you can't, you can't deny it. Hindi mo pwedeng tanggihan ng Panginoon. You can run. You can't, you can run, but you can't hide. Right? At the end of the day, if you have a calling, That's where you'll be in your calling. Amen? So, the excuse ko before back then was, I'm not ready. Why? Why why do I think I'm not right enough? Why do I think I'm not good enough? Why? Because uh, during in high school, you know, I used to remember my mom, my mom going to my school because my teacher called my mom because I was fighting. Because why? Because, you know, I, I was doing something else. There's one time, this was the second week in high school. This was the second week in high school. And yung discipline teacher, pumunta. And pumunta sa, sa class namin. Tapos, nag-argue kami. Nainis ako, nangawa ko, hindi ko ba ito yun? Pagtanong ko sa harapan niya. <laughs> so, because of that, nasuspend ako. You know, so, those things that I've been doing, there's nothing. Napasama ako sa masamang barkada. You know, tapos sama ako sa mga sambagada na, na ano ako sa mga bisyo, you know, you see drugs, you know, 
Mga kuryosik, napunta ako sa marijuana, nakikipag-away ako, at tingnan ako makabuntis. Ang dami kong gil... Oy, huwag tumatawa. Ang dami kong nagawa. You know, I, I've done so much things in life that make me feel like I'm not good enough. You know? But then like I said, sabi nga si Jeremiah, di ba? Sabi si Jeremiah, I know you ever since, even before you were born. Alam ko na kung ano magyayari sa'yo and everything. And then, sabi, and then, you know, when God gives you a calling, when God gives you a calling, it's like a fruit. Diba? It's like a fruit. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter if you say yes or no. It's like a fruit. When God, when God has a calling for you, it's like a fruit. Now, Pinal plant niya. It's like a fruit planted under the set, under under the soil, and then he's gonna give you things for it to grow. And when it's grown already, then that is the right time for you to grow up. Like what happened to me? Ang dami kong dinaanan sa buhay ko na masama na hindi ka ano ano kay kay Lord na hindi nagbago. Ay 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 ka ano ano related. So hindi ka ay 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 kay Lord. It, you know, it doesn't look good through God's eyes. But then when God said, now is now, this time is this time, now is the time, then that's why I'm here. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So, ang mga excuse natin right now, you know, mga excuse natin right now is not that far different from the excuses that we that we see in the Bible itself. Diba? Ang, uh, like, for example, I'm not rightful enough. I'm too young. That's what I said. Diba? Same thing what Jeremiah said. Sabi ni Jeremiah, Lord, when, when God said he's going to be a prophet, sabi ni Jeremiah, no, uh, Lord, how can I be a prophet when I can't speak? I'm too young. Diba? Sabi ni Moses then, sabi ni Moses, Lord, I can't speak. I'm, maybe I'm not ready. Sabi ni um, Ananias, Ananias, ang pangalan mo? Ananias. When God asked Ananias to um, go to Paul to pray for him, Sabi niya, Ananias, no, he's not rightful enough. Diba sabi niya kay Paul? He's, Paul's not rightful enough to be God's, uh, not to be God's um, servant. So, most of our excuses now is the same excuses back then. Diba? So, when I had those excuses, you know, I was having those excuses, I was like, I'm not rightful enough. I, I can't do this. I can't do that. Why? Because I've been doing this. But God's calling is irrevocable. Sabi po, sabi po, sa Romans 11.29, tingnan po natin. Sabi po doon, the gift of God and God's calling is irrevocable. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng irrevocable? Irrevocable means hindi pwedeng ibalik. You cannot change it back. So once you have that gift, once you have that calling from God, then you cannot give it back. It cannot be returned. It cannot be replaced. It cannot be given back. Amen? Amen? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, when you can't give it back, it's like marriage. You know, having a calling from God, it's an, ex uh, it's an extension of a commitment, an extension of a covenant. What's a covenant? It's like marriage, right? It's like marriage. A covenant is like marriage. That's why it's irrevocable. A marriage is irrevocable. That's why when you lost your husband, go get it back. Say so yun, di ba? It's irrevocable. Your, your relationship with your husband, your relationship with... Your relationship with your husband, your relationship with your partner is irrevocable. Why? Because... In front of God's eyes, you made a covenant with Him. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, you know, looking back in my life, sabi ko, I really didn't want to, you know, to stand as a pastor. I didn't want to, I didn't want to replace my dad. I didn't like going to church. I didn't like, you know, reading the Bible. I didn't like... You know, in one point, I grew up as a Christian, but I was a fake Christian. I was coming here for the sake of it. So me and my parents won't fight. <laughs> yeah, you know, two years ago. Two years ago. So two years ago, that's, that's who I was. You know, I was going to church. But then it's just for the sake of it. Just for my, me and my parents not to fight. Why? It's because when I don't go to church, my mom's like, ah, 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 ah. 
You know, and I don't like hearing my mom shouting because it's so loud. You know, it's so loud. <laughs> but then, you know, when when God calls you, He's gonna say, "No, you have to come." Right? So I was doing so much things back then. I'll tell you straight. Like I said, I was into drinking. I was into yossi. I was, you know, I was into marijuana. You know, I was, there's this one time, even in fourth grade, when I was in third grade high school, I was detained uh, for three hours in, in um, the police station because I stole things in HMV. I stole things before. That's how I was back then. And I wasn't ashamed of it. I wasn't ashamed of what I used to do before. I was in a fraternity. I used to fight a lot. I used to beat up people in the street for no reason. That's who I was back then. But then when God said, right now is the time, enough is enough, then you can't do anything about it. You have to move when God tells you to move. Because why? When everyone is a calling, the calling is irrevocable. Right? You cannot do anything when God tells you to move. You have to move. That is the Bible. I forgot the verse. That is the Bible. Who am I to question thee when he holds me to account? But we're accountable to him. We can't question everything that he tells us to do. We can't question everything, anything that he says. Why? Because he holds us account. Everything that we do, we are hold accountable. Amen? So again, but answering his call is an act of commitment and spiritual maturity. This shows obedience. Amen? Why? It's because you're following God, you're being obedient. Right? So, if you're following God and shows obedience, then what if you're not following God? What if you're ignoring His call? What does it mean? You're being disobedient. Amen? So, once you're being disobedient, it says in the Bible, once you're being disobedient, you're like Jonah. You're running. So, what happens when you're disobedient? God taps you. God corrects you. Like a father would correct like a father would correct their children. They're going to tap you. Right? You're going to say, hey, you're doing something wrong. I want to set you straight. So that what happens? Just because you're not answering God's calling, you're being disobedient. Right? Same way as if you don't give your tithes, you're being disobedient. It's the same thing. So God's going to tap you. God's going to set you straight. So once God sets you straight, hey, you know, he's going to, you know, when, when, I didn't want to answer God's calling. I didn't want to answer God's calling. I was going through a lot. But I was doing fine. Me and myself, after high school, I was doing fine. You know, I was I was working. I have a lot of friends. You know, and I didn't like going to church. It was my life back then. And when, you know, I was working, and for 20, uh, two years ago, so that's 23, no, no. I was 18, 19, 20. Imagine a 90 year old earning a hundred thousand pesos. That was my life. You know, I, w- I was Saturday night. I was going to party in Lake Waipo in Central. For you guys, it's one chai. For us, it's one chai. And then you're, you're you're partying, and then you're with your friends. You're drinking a lot. You're gonna go to church the next day. And my reason back then, I swear, my reason back then before was at least when I go party ako, pag nagiging lasing ako Friday. I said, next day, Saturday, Sunday, uh, with church. That was my reason back then why I can drink. So that was my life, you know. I was very screwed up. I was very, I was very far away from who I am right now. You know, when, when you look back at everything, even when I look back, I cry because why? I can see how God is changing me every day. I can tell you even before yesterday, I'm different already. You know? So when I was there, I was, you know, I was getting a lot of money. I was everything. But then, like I said, when you don't follow God's calling, what he's gonna do? He's gonna tap you. So what did he do? He took my job away. He took all my friends away. He took my money away. And he said, "You've done enough. Now is the time for you to come back." And that's what happened. And again, if God uses people. To actually bring you back. Diba? God uses people to bring you back to where He wants you to be. So one Saturday, 
God use my mom. Like I said, I, did, I don't like her screaming. Like, I don't like her. So, uh, God used my mom one Saturday. And I was sleeping that night, and I dreamt of my mom screaming at me. Say, Paula, I'm going to church. So, I was sleeping. I was going to go to church. So, when I got to church, I asked my mom, Did you call me? Were you screaming at me? Uh, earlier in the morning. So I tell him, no, I wasn't at home. I was working. So God used my mom in my dreams because I don't like her screaming. You have a mom well, for me to go back to church. And when I got back to church, <laughs> and the same day, maybe I'm going to go to the Lord, Ate Jemma, which is the music uh, leader, Sabri Kong. So I'm going to go to Ate Jemma. When Ate Jemma was there, I said, Ay, Paolo. Um, she was very open to me coming back to me. Because hey, usually, uh, you know, uh, usually when when matagal kang hindi ang laro, bawal naman tumuyo agad eh. Diba? So, she was very open for me to play drums. So, I was okay. I kept playing drums, you know, for a few weeks. Play ako ng play. And then, again, God's gonna use people to bring you to where He wants you to be. Right? So, there's one time that post ako sa Facebook. Sabi ko, Kausap ko sa Ate Gemma. Or, ah, it's nice to, uh, to play drums. Oh, there's this new song. I hope we can, uh, we can play it in church. And then nakita nila Ate John, Ate Liwal. So God used Ate John, Ate Liwal to bring me back to Sunday. Because I wasn't going Sunday. I was only going Saturdays and Sundays. So God used Ate John, Ate Liwal to bring me back to Sunday. Right? So I'm like, wait, Paolo, but Saturday ka na nag, ano, magtumudog. Bakit tumudog ka naman sa Sunday? So, God used people, and in time, two years, and that ginamit ni Lord, that ginamit si Ate Kelly, Ate Kelly made me feel welcome, made me feel at home, right? Made me feel at home in the music ministry, that's why, you know, God uses people, because why? When, with God, when you're with God, and when you're with His people, you feel at peace. Amen? Amen? You feel at home in that. Because when you're not with God, you know, you see a lot, so, napapansin nyo ba sa mga kaibigan nyo? Napapansin nyo ba sa mga tao na kilala nyo na hindi nakakala, na, nakaka, who doesn't know Lord? Sorry, hindi ako kapagala. Who doesn't know God at all? Who doesn't know Lord? You know, every day they wake up, they worry about everything. They worry so much, right? But then, for you, parang wala kang kinaalala. Lumigising ka sa, ano, lumigising ka araw-araw, ha, sarap ng buhay. Kasi wala kang iniisip eh. Di ba, may problema ka, pero wala kang problema. Di ba? Tumatawa ka na parang walang problema, na parang wala kang iniisip. Naguhugas ka ng pinggan na parang ikaw yung boss. So, God uses people just for you to be, to answer His calling. Para magbalik ka. And when God said, move, you have to move. Because again, the calling is irrevocable. Hindi pwedeng maibalik. Amen? Amen. Iisa lang yung tao dito. Amen. <laughs> okay. So, when we don't answer His calling, don't expect God to answer back. Amen? You know, sometimes tayo, selfish tayo. Gusto natin, you know, you know, minsan may, mga, may, may, may attitude tayo na, Uy, sis, ano yung naman ang pagkakit? Diba? Bibigyan tayo, kapatid tayo. And all of a sudden, siya naman yung nangangilang ng pagkakit. Uy, sis, ito yung naman ang pagkakit. Sabi ang, hmm, taba-taba, nakakain ka ba? <laughs> diba? We're, we're unfair. You know, sometimes we're unfair. You know, we ask God to answer our prayers. We ask God to answer when we call. We ask God to hear and to listen when we speak to Him. But when He asks you to answer His call, He's calling. Because you have so much excuses in life. You have so much excuses that you, you, you hinder yourself, you limit yourself from becoming so much better, for becoming so much bigger. You know, for getting that bigger purpose in your life. Because of those excuses, that's why you remain small. 
That's why most of us right now, you have, you know, you, you sit there, you go to church, just to go to church, just to sit there and do nothing. Because when we have these excuses that limits us, like I said, everyone here is made for a bigger purpose. Everyone here is built for something better. Amen? But the sad thing about it is because of these excuses, it limits us. It hinders us from being used by God. Amen? So, tingnan po natin, Proverbs 1, 24, 26. Ano pong sabi doon? Since you refuse to listen when I call, I've stretched out my hand and no one paid attention. You ignored my advice and rejected my correction. I myself will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when what you fear comes. So don't expect God to answer your prayers when you don't answer himself. Don't expect God to answer your questions, to answer your call when his own calling you can't answer. If you can make excuses to God to accept his calling, he can make excuses to you as well. That's one thing about us. We always want God to answer our prayers. We always want God, you know, to work in our life. But when it comes to him, we don't want to do anything. We just want to sit there and watch him bless us. No, he's not going to bless you. Why? Because you're not answering his calling. You have to answer his calling. It's a covenant. Accepting Christ is the start. But you have to walk with him. Amen? So answering his calling is a covenant. Like I said, a covenant is like a wedding. It's like marriage for you a covenant is a relationship. A covenant is a commitment. By accepting God's calling, you increase, you, you, you prove your commitment to Him. That's why He's going to bless you. Right? And the sad thing about it, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why most of us are scared to answer His call, because we know it's going to be hard. Right? We know that it's a narrow path. We know that you know, it, it's hindi siya comfortable. It's not comfortable. You know, like the same way I answer God's calling with me. You know, I couldn't speak. God didn't let me speak. I can't eat. Oh my God, I can't eat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's not comfortable in God's way. It, it, you know, God's way is not comfortable. Why? Because at the end of that narrow path, you have a bigger price waiting for you. Amen. Amen. At the end of that path is the golden gate where God is willing to pour down blessings to open the open the, the, the doors of heaven. You know, but you have to answer his calling. Most of us we want to say easy, easy lang. That's one of our excuses. Easy lang tayo na hindi tayo ano hindi tayo nahirap. Ay nung one of our ane. One of our main excuses. Iba kasi mahirap maging pastor. Mahirap mag-evangelize. Mahinit sa labas. Mahirap magtamboy kasi lagi ng sasayaw. Mahirap maging tumunta sa music ministry kasi lagi kakakantas pero sinado ka, nakakahiya. Iba? <laughs> because of that narrow path, you're afraid. You're afraid to answer his calling. But then like what the Bible said, at the end of the path is the golden gate. Doors of heaven. So if, once you're there, he's going to bless you all the way. And don't think, hey, in that narrow path, don't think you're alone. Why? Because you're with God. The whole way you're walking that narrow path, you're with God. Why? You're not alone. Amen? So in that narrow path, when you, know, when you accept the calling of Christ, what, what makes it, you know, a bit more narrow is during that walk, he's going to mold you. Right? He's going to mold you to something better. He's going to mold you. Para Father's hand, diba? Once you accept God, once you answer his calling, he's going to prepare you to where he wants you to be. Like how 
God prepared me for right now. If I didn't experience what I've experienced back then, if I didn't experience, you know, uh, doing everything that I used to do back then, what can I share right in front of you? How can I be a testimony of how God changed my life? Yeah. Amen? So, sabi po sa Peter, sabi po sa Peter, 1 Peter 5, 10, verse 5 to 10. After you suffer for a little while, he, he, whom called you to his glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So, the, the, the path may be narrow. But like I said, he's there. And he's going to mold you to something better than you think you are right now. Because why? Because God sees what you can be. God sees what you can become. Amen? Because why? He knows you even before you were born. Right? And we need God to have that, you know, we need God to be in that, that, that state where we're upgraded. Where, you know, we're in that level where we can't be put down by the enemy. That's why we don't, like, you're fragile. You know, when you don't answer his call, you're fragile. Why? Because the moment you answer his call, you have God with you, and he's going to mold you to what you want, what he wants you to become. Amen. Amen. I didn't think that, you know, I would have the strength to be here right now. Ten years ago, I was afraid. But because of what I gone through, what I went through, and the way... God used people to change me the way God changed me yesterday, the day before yesterday, two weeks before, last year, two years before, how God changed me is who I am right now. It's because of this. It's because of what? When God says, right now is the right time, now is the time, enough is enough, that you can't do anything else but to answer his call. Amen? God wants to pour out his blessings. Amen. All you have to do is answer his call. And you know, I'm not talking about, you know, when I say blessings, it's not just, it's not just um, money. It's not just physically. You know, it's not just mentally. It's not health. But the best thing about it, you know, is when you answer his call, he promised for the eternal life. Amen. Amen. That's one thing that you can't have here. You know, God may give you blessings with money. God may give you blessings with food. God may give you blessings with health. But at the end of the day, the best gift that you can have is Christ. Amen. And once you have Christ, you know, once you believe in Christ, once you have Christ in your life, that is the true blessing. Amen. Amen. You wake up every day knowing that you're in peace. You have nothing to worry about. Isn't that a blessing? You know, Amen. but you have to follow God's will. You have to follow God. You know, most of us here, I know, was prophesied for something more. Even though you're working right now, you know, you're 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 in the ministry, you're in the music team, you're an usher. But most of us are prophesied for something better. Some of us are prophesied being a preacher. Some of us are prophesied being more than a leader. Some of us are prophesied being a prophet. Some of us are prophesied. Being so much bigger than what you are right now. But because of your excuses, because of my excuses, because of all of our excuses, we hinder ourselves from being something bigger. Amen. We hinder, we limit ourselves from becoming so much better. You know, don't you want that? Don't you want to accept, you know, his calling and become something bigger? Don't you want to accept his calling and become, you know, what he wants you to be? I remember Pastor Ed, he was preaching once, and you know, his, he was uh, the same like me. He was he went through a lot of things. He went through um, a lot, you know. And I remember, um, I'm not sure if you remember, we were talking with him. You know, Pastor Ed, as a driver, he never said, he never told me that he's just a driver. Why? Because he's something bigger. Amen. He's a preacher of God's word. Amen. What is bigger than a driver, right? Amen. You know. When I hear people say, oh, the master of the like, all I do is wash dishes, clean this room, and I'm like, alaga. Don't say that. Why? Because you are something bigger as long as you answer God's calling. Right? God sees you. You know, when you see yourself right now, you see yourself right now, how God sees you is something bigger. 
how God sees you is bigger than how you see yourself. This world, you know, this world, after they use you, after this world use you, after you get conformed in this world, they're going to throw you like a paper. Amen? They're going to throw you like a paper. They're going to throw you like a paper like that. And then what? Everyone in this world who doesn't have God is going to walk past by you. They're not going to care if you're down. They're not going to care if you have no one else. They're not going to care if you're a piece of paper on the I'm telling you this straight. When you answer God's calling, when you have Christ in your life, when God sees you like this, what he's going to do? He's going to pick it up. Open your back. Amen? So God wants to bless you as long as you answer his calling. So what limits you? You know, church, what limits you from answering God's calling? What, you know, what hinders you from answering God's calling? I want you to take out the paper. This is small paper. I want you to take a paper right now. And I want you to write all the excuses that you've been given to God. I want you to write all the excuses that you've been given to God. I want you to write them right on the paper. I believe God is going to be working right now. I want you to write all the excuses that you've been given to God. He's calling you for something better. He's calling you to do something bigger. But we have excuses. I want you to write those excuses right now. Whether you think you're not good enough, whether you think you're not rightful enough, whether you think you're not ready, whether you think it's not supposed to be you, I want you to take out a piece of paper and write. I want you to write all those excuses. Okay. I want you to write all those excuses that you have. Just remember, with this excuse it it limits you from everything that you can do. This, this is what limits you to become something better. These excuses that you have, it's not a friend of yours. It's an enemy. Why? Because, you know, it stops us from everything that we, we can do. You know, some of us here right now, we're just sitting, we have no ministry, not really doing anything. But God has called you for something more, right? God has called you for something bigger than you can imagine. You might be in tambourine, you think you're doing enough. No, God, every time God has a better calling for you. You think it's enough to become to be in the music ministry? No, God has a better calling for you. Every day you get called by God. A small calling or a big calling. But it's just us if we want to answer we want to say yes or not. You know, don't wait for, for God to tap you and say you have to do this, you have to do this. Don't wait for God to correct you. You know, 2015 is a new year. It's a new life. It's a new year. You know, it, it's, it's a fresh start for us to actually answer what God has been telling you to do. So I want you to write all those excuses right now. Everyone done? Can I make a mess? I want you to hold that piece of paper. Because that paper involves your excuses from God. That paper is what holds your excuses that you give to God. And I want you to hold that paper and pray to God right now that things are going to change. Why? Because God wants to bless you. 
God wants to do so much for you. But because of this excuse, it's what limits you from doing something better. It's what limits you from becoming so much more. And because of this excuse, we remain small. 2015 is a new year. 2015 is a new start. So why not start this year by answering God's calling to you? Why not start this year? Answering God's calling. Because, like I said, in the Bible, God wants to bless you. God wants to bless your life. God wants to welcome you in His calling. But because of this excuse, it's what hinders us from doing so much more. If you have these excuses written on a paper and you want to get rid of these excuses, I want you to come up as the altar is open and the pastor is going to pray for you. You know, the pastor is going to pray for you. I want you to take the altar is open. I want you to take that paper and come up front and the pastor is going to pray for you. So we're going to pray for you. Amen? Altar is open. God send you. God send you right now. Hey. I want to bless you when you're out of this man of those excuses. If that's all you went out, hey, I want to bless you, but God, you have to get rid of those excuses first. Because when you go, when you have those excuses, I can't work. I can't work. That's why right now, the others open up. If you have those excuses, you have to go. Thank you. 